we're going to the coast of Galway now, and Galway boasts beautiful beaches, eight Green Coast Award beaches and seven uh, Blue Flag beaches. And they're very well looked after with 32 clean coast groups operating along the Galway coastline. I'd like to welcome Dan Clavy from Conservation Volunteers Galway. And they're a group of volunteers who got involved in the Clean Coast programme um, <clears throat> about a year ago and have done some really excellent work in that time. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. I have to say that I'm uh, really inspired by all the uh, wonderful work that's uh, been done by a lot of the previous speakers, and uh, a lot of it, um, a lot of the good work I've only become aware of today. So, you know, I have to say congratulations to everybody who's gone ahead of me. Um, I'm Dan Clabby from Galway. I'm delighted to be here to talk on behalf of Conservation Volunteers Galway, and to have the opportunity to talk about our good relationships with other groups and individuals involved in coastal cleanups and stuff in the greater Galway city area generally. Uh, Conservation Volunteers Galway was founded in 2010 by Mayo woman Kat Katrina Cunningham. She brought the successful concept uh, that was started by Hans Visser in Fingal. She brought the idea down to Galway and a few people came on board. And uh, we aim to protect and enhance our natural heritage through volunteer participation in practical conservation projects. We assist local authorities and community groups in enhancing and maintaining access to and promoting awareness of places with biodiversity value. And we're really a kind of a, a Saturday squad. We just, uh, we're just a bunch of amateurs and we go out maybe one or two Saturdays a month. Um, now, we got into coastal cleanups a few years ago more by kind of accident than design, or organically, as you could say. Um, we started in 2010 mainly doing inland stuff uh, in public woodlands we, within Galway City. We were planting new trees in Barna Woods and we helped the City Council clear uh, invasive cherry laurels from uh, Ross Camwood. And since then, in no particular order, we've planted many hundreds of more small trees. You can barely see the little twigs there, but they're actually much, much bigger by now. And we've started a few native hedgerows and we're developing wildflower areas in parks, which will take a few years to come to maturity, as you can see. We've also done kind of specialist stuff like making bat boxes. See, there's kind of a bird box without the hole. There's a little kind of a narrow slit in the ladder for the bats to go in, and of course, placing them in the woods. And then also putting in uh, willow fence barriers in the woods to stop people trampling through unofficial paths so that new growth will get a chance to, uh, to uh, recover and to actually help people get into the woods and enjoy the woods, we're putting even more effort into clearing away several years of mucky build-ups from paths so that people can go on the proper path again. And then after that, uh, we just need to give it a, a bit of a visual definition uh, every autumn. Um, now, our woodland work, it has to be done, say, in the autumn winter because we can't go in there in the spring summer, you'd be disturbing nesting birds and that kind of thing. So like hot tea and adequate clothing and all that kind of thing is, is very important and some of us we have uh, a better tolerance of uh, mucky conditions than others and some of us uh, you know the, the cold can kind of get to a few of us on one or two occasions but that's only maybe once a year we might have a bad rain day or whatever. Um, now we've got many members who uh, show up some regularly some once off some occasionally some will come along singly or in groups and a lot of people, uh, they'll come along once or twice and then they might bring one or two pals along the next time. And we have good, a good mix of people. We've got locals, expats, students and overseas students. A lot of overseas students in Galway that come out on a Saturday morning, totally free gratis and for nothing and we're a 100% voluntary um, bunch. So we are. And we've got a good overlap with other similar groups within the city, the Terryland Forest people and the Merlin Park Woods people as well. Um, now, we're a kind of a diverse but normal and well-adjusted bunch, except for sometimes we can get a bit daft, like when we're conserving the St. Patrick's Day Parade, or doing even dafter stuff like digging up bits of uh, burren landscape from the route of a new motorway and then for transplanting it into a public park. Anyway, we didn't uh, originally set out to be in the uh, clean coast uh, business as such, but we found that... Um, when we were working in the woodlands and we'd often be in a place for seasons for maybe a few months at a time and we didn't think it was worth our while doing cleanups because more litter would come and we said we'd leave the cleanups until the very last day of the season and then we'd do a big cleanup on the last day of the season and then happily we discovered that once you do a cleanup and set a standard uh, when people come into it 
they have respect for it and you get like more harmony than harm when people come into a, a nice place and there was one particular place Ross Cam Wood which was a bit kind of messy back in maybe 2010-11 and we cleaned it up and we went back in 2012 on a kind of an annual kind of patrol looking for litter and actually there was uh, when we were looking for litter, we couldn't actually find any. We walked through the woods for the whole day and literally couldn't find litter because the standard was set. So then, since then, we're very, very happy to get involved in kind of cleanups generally. And when we started getting word about the clean coasts uh, stuff from Olivia and then later Becky, we kind of jumped at the chance. Um, so we did. Now, um, we started maybe back in, I think it was 2011, we did a cleanup in Silver Strand Beach. And then in 2012, we helped, I think it was Glan, Seuss and the Galway, they were doing a clean-up on the, the kind of a dead end of a canal behind Galway Cathedral. And, you know, that's how we started getting more kind of away from the land and more to the water's edge and, and that kind of thing. So, um, now, uh, Noreen Burke from the Atlantic Aquaria, she does a lot of the kind of clean coast effort down in Galway as well. And uh, apologies for not having any pictures of her crew, but she generally gets a, a good group of you know, mutual enthusiasm from students around the Salt Hill and Grattan area. So then, uh, last year we decided we were going to branch out to, um, you know, the off-beach, um, off-beach shores around uh, Ballylohan Beach, uh, maybe a kilometre each side of the beach to do the rough shore. And then, around about this time last year, we decided to go to um, uh, further afield, uh, Roscam Point, kind of halfway between Galway City and uh, Warren Moor, and that particular shore hadn't been cleaned in a few years and we kind of went there just well number one to clean it up but two to kind of show people where it was because it was off the beaten track and then in the tidal region behind it there was a seal colony and everything uh, there at the time and you know it was just kind of a day out to um, you know do a bit of a clean up and we got about a dozen bags and the local farmer Pat King he let us park in the field and take a shortcut across the field and everything and we had it done say last October and thought oh that's grand now we won't have to do it for another few years but then the infamous storms came, and uh, the storms came along. Then that's sorry, that's Roscan Point before the storms. You can see the nice grassy area uh, there. But the storms came along then, and there was huge surges, and they went actually quite far inland, bringing a lot of stuff with them. And a lot of people, individuals and groups, uh, responded fantastically to that event. For example, there was one young man. Uh, uh, Matthew O'Toole, and he just went with a few of his pals and he went up to the Renmore side of uh, Lakatolia there. there was, they got 60 big bags of plastic bottles just from that one corner of uh, Lakatolia. And uh, they did it totally off their own bat, so they did after the storms. And some places that we cleaned before, the Ballylohan, the Murrow shore behind Ballylohan and the Ross Cam point, a lot of the shores actually benefited from, benefited from the storms because the storms swept everything away, briars and all. And the first year we did Ballylohan, it was kind of tough picking the plastics and that out of the briars, but the storms just took briars, plastics and everything away. But of course, when it takes it away, it ends up someplace. And it all ended up in the kind of creek there uh, behind um, Ross Cam. And some of it went into uh, Ornmore Bay. And this kind of dead ending effect it kind of was very, very visible at Renville Harbour. Um, and I have to say that the uh, Ornmore Tidy Towns people, uh, Mark, there it is, um, you can see, the, the photos aren't great. You can see that there's a big mound of seaweed, but the amount that was washed up was so great that instead of being in a ni nice, neat line along the wall, it kind of backed all the way down to the, uh, to the tide line. And you can imagine that uh, seaweed there was actually waist deep. You can see where it goes up to the wall down at the corner of the bay. So Margaret McNulty from the Ordmore Tidy Towns, she mustered about 50 people on the first cam Saturday after the storm and everybody got stuck in and went out. And uh, within a few hours, I'd say, uh, ourselves and the, well, mostly the Tidy Towns people, uh, we had a skip foot filled and uh, like that now when you have good contacts and good cooperation from local people, there was one local guy with a, a van and he spent the day shuttling up and down the seawall as people were bringing bags and people were filling the trailer as, as quick as he was driving up and down and the skip actually got filled and it was actually overflowing on the day and people just kept plugging away and then at the end of the day most of the actual uh, trash was actually uh, collected. Now because of the depth of the seaweed you couldn't get it all so the 
or more tidy townspeople, they did their annual clean up again in March a couple of months later, and then they got another two thirds of a skip, including the kind of turnovers and that that had been there under the seaweed. Um, now, it's very important to go out and do these kind of after storm cleanups as soon as you can and not postpone them, especially in the west, because we've got a lot of kind of onshore strong winds. And you can see there this kind of a, a row of um, a row of thorny hedgerows and that in the background there. And you've got to kind of get, get the stuff before it blows up into the briars and thorns, because once it gets into the thorns, you know yourselves it's kind of impossible to get it out. And years ago, maybe about 10 or 15 years ago, that was a complete mess back in the plastic ba bag days. But it's kind of a, a stitch in time saves nine kind of a thing now. So we, um, in CBG, we went out to help the, uh, the people in that bay uh, as a priority. And we'd like to do our own rough shore cleanups, say, early in the spring, before any vegetation comes up because it's much easier to pick along the shore. But because the storms had taken all the vegetation and everything from the shores near Galway City, uh, we, there was no need to go back to Roscam until uh, later on in March. And then we went back to Renmore. Uh, so we did uh, for the Clean Coast Day in May. And happily, um, on both occasions this year, the CGV, the Conservation Volunteers, volunteers, we were outnumbered by local residents. And it's all about uh, having the contact and knowing who's the guy with the magic email list. And uh, lucky enough, the Renmore uh, residence contact, uh, Commandant Duffy, he, um, he's from my own old neighborhood. So once I found out he was the Renmore residence guy, he, just like magic, produced a dozen people on the day. And similarly with the Ross Cam people, they were after uh, having uh, they were after resurrecting the residence committee after a few years of elapse, and they had a well attended EGM. And I just uh, kind of mentioned cleaning the shore, and like that, a uh, dozen people just showed up magically on the day when, when we had a good weather forecast and we sent out the email and they just showed up. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to take a, a group photo of the uh, Roscan people because um, we were kind of um, well spread out on the day and that kind of thing. And um, there was one particular episode where you can see in the background there, we were using the, the field as a kind of a shortcut but we kind of forgot that things get muckier and muckier over the winter, so we were kind of pushing barrels through ankle-deep muck and all that and everything, so that's how we missed out on the group photo. But um, a lot of uh, local people, they'll be genuinely interested, and they'll have kind of genuine queries, like one query is uh, who's going to collect the rubbish and that. So that's where the organisation comes in, because when you say you're doing it as part of a Clean Coast event, and that we've got a good working relationship with the Parks Department and the Council. And when you explain that we've already got it prearranged that the Council will collect the rubbish and we just leave a nice tidy pile kind of hidden at the end of the road and the uh, Council will collect it within a couple of days and then everybody's happy. And another um, aspect of you know, these events and all that, uh, when you send out the emails and people show up and all that, uh, you can get people to kind of rediscover or rediscover their, their local shores. Uh, for example, this is uh, from this September. Now, Noreen Burke already had a whole bunch of people at uh, Grattan. So a three-man team from uh, CVG, we went to this beach between uh, Renmore and Galway City. Now, a lot of people would be living in Renmore all their lives, and they wouldn't necessarily know that you can actually walk the shore all the way from Ballylochan Strand into town. Because in the old days for that uh, new docks, uh, Enterprise Park is, there used to be a salt marsh there back in the old days and you couldn't kind of walk it without going through the marsh. But now there's uh, 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 kind of a built up area there with a back road leading from the town and there's a nice beach in between. It's actually kind of a hidden gem in its own right. It's got its, its own tidal lagoon in behind it and a tidal marsh and it's a really nice beach. And now it's got actually easy access for dinghies and kayaks and that kind of thing. And that's, that beach is actually under the jurisdiction of the Galway Harbour Company and uh, that, that. So anyway, um, we find that the most important thing whenever we're doing anything is to have the tea break al fresco. But you have to kind of plan ahead because there'll always be somebody who will forget something like the tea bags or the cups or something. So you have to have maybe two or three people organised to do the tea and then you're safe. And it's not like a tea break to get a bit of camaraderie going and people will kind of stay on for a bit of a tidy up. And if life is about learning, you're always learning something every day. There's these two guys here, Porrick on my side here. He's a very knowledgeable local Galway guy. And even he didn't know that there's a kind of a tidal causeway where you can walk out to Hare Island in the background. Um, and he didn't even know that until we were actually pointing it out to him. And the other guy there, uh, Vixlab, he's been with us for a few years. And uh, 
we didn't know until that day either that he, he used to actually fly a MiG, like a Top Gun guy. So he always learned something every day. And another thing we learned when we finally got around to doing the, um, the data card, uh, we're, this is just from that one small beach in September, the variety and the composition and the amounts of stuff that you get from one area of a couple of hundred meters. And it, it does kind of make you think, uh, you know, when you actually start adding it up. So that's what we'll have to do from then on. Then there's other people who do kind of stuff off their own bat. There's uh, Rushing Lagoon there on the way up to Silver Strand. Um, there's one local guy who does patrol that kind of tidal lagoon off his own bat. And actually, there's one day we had a clean coast, clean coast event, and one lady, she went to the wrong beach by mistake. Uh, but that didn't bother her. She just kind of carried on, and she ended up with half a dozen bags of shore trash in her car by the time she eventually found us. So, you know, it's, 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 it's all good, so it is. And at the end of the day, it's all about people and the planet we share. Thank you.